Today, on the bench, we have a Carl Zeiss Tessar. It's a 50mm lens and it's f2.8, so it's not super fast, but it's okay. Very similar to a lot of the old vintage speeds. It's the Zebra model and probably made between 69 and 70. There are loads of these, millions of these around. They're quite a common lens. Um, different kind of styles to um, they were made all the way up until until the 90s I believe so very very popular and very very cheap for a lens like this you could look at something like only as little as 10 pounds to perhaps as much as 50 pounds it's a really really nice lens uh, it's not the sharpest lens but it gives you a lot of character in your photographs. It's it's really nice. It's uh, one of my favourite lenses, actually. There's nothing wrong with this lens. Nothing really wrong with it. Um, but there is one thing. I use a Nikon camera. So, on Nikon, it's... Um, it's difficult to adapt these lenses for Nikon. So, you can buy these things, which are lens adapters. But the downside is that they still don't let you focus to infinity. Great for portraits or close-up work, but not so good for other things. You can get a corrective lens version of this, where there's a, a, a new kind of Chinese made perhaps lens in there just a single lens which fits over here and, and converts the the uh, the distance but the trouble with these lenses these corrective lenses is that they distort the actual original quality of the lens and I haven't seen a review yet that actually prefers this look or um, is a complimentary review should we say I'm going to stick this on the camera now I'm going to show you what I mean when I say it doesn't focus to infinity anymore As you can see, I'm trying to focus in on a toy car which is on a little wall about two feet in front of me. Beyond the toy car, another foot and a half away, is a toy shell. A pink toy plastic shell. And I can't focus in on this. It's just, just out of range. So my maximum distance for focusing without any modification is about three feet. Right, so, that was a few shots, well, a video shot, I think, of the, um, the Zeiss using this little adapter. So, as you can see, it's, it's not brilliant. It's not, it's not the best solution. I actually use this one permanently on my modified Helios 44.2. So, I'm going to put that back on now. As you can see, it's quite modified, isn't it? It's, uh... It's, uh, it's got the lens inserts and all the gears and stuff and that's modified for Nikon too. I might make a video about that at some point. Back to this. This is the gem. I love this lens. Right, the problem with this is we can't focus to infinity and that's a pity, a real pity because it's a beautiful lens. I mean, look at the state on that. It's all glittery and it's all aluminium and it just looks the part, doesn't it, on, on the camera. It looks, when, you, when you've got one of these on your camera, I mean, people can instantly say, he's using a vintage lens, he knows what he's doing. 
it's it's a really nice lens anyway right so um what i did to fix this problem was to 3d print a re-engineer an adapter that works with Nikon so this back plate here it's fitted on with three screws and that's all it is three screws this whole plate comes off and this this just fits in its place and works as a completely new flange plate for the Tassar and it works quite well being 3d printed it's quite tough material but it's ugly it's really ugly so with a bit of a bit of magic we can make castings and this is a casting from that from that and I've got another one here which I prefer actually because it's a little bit metallic and perhaps uh, a little bit more lovely. So I'll show you how to put one of these on. It's really simple. So if you've got a Tassar at home, you've got one locked in the cupboard or you know you you want to use it and you just happen to have a Nikon camera and you know it's no good to you. Instead of selling it, why not just have a look for some of these? Because I think a lot of you out there will actually like these. So I'm going to make a small amount of these, I manufacture just a few of them, and see if, if you want to play with one. I'll show you how to put one on, and um, then you can sort of decide whether you want to attempt this unscrewing and uh, tampering with the lens thing. It's more or less uh, a non-destructive way of modifying this lens. It's fairly easy to unscrew and the only thing you've really got to watch out for is that inside there is a little automatic focusing pin. Now this sometimes, this mostly should stick out the top of this part here but I've had to file off just a tiny little bit, perhaps a millimetre off that and all we do is position that little thing so that it fits over the over that little pin stick one of these on it oh. screw them back in it can be a bit fiddly so you might need a magnet on the end of your screwdriver and And that's it. Sorry, you've probably just seen the behind my hand there. Uh, I'll have to cut that out maybe. Feels weird when you're looking at this on the camera and then actually trying to do it by hand. Uh, I don't want to get any closer to it because I'm sure you don't want to see the back of my head. There we go, that's more or less it. Just need to put this one last screw in there. It's harder doing this on camera than it is without. So that's that's what we have. Now that's my modified lens. It's uh very nice, very nice. I'm gonna stick that on the camera and I'll I'll show you what you can do. Sometimes you've got to press that little button to make sure it's, it's actually stuck into the slot. Keep it keep it uh, locked in place. You don't want it falling off. Right, I'm going to take some shots with this, show you what it was like, what it is like with this new one, and then you can you can see for yourself. And it's a, it's actually quite solid. It's it's really nice and and tight fit. So I'll see you in a minute.
I'm on the Isle of Anglesey at the moment and I'm looking over the Menai Straits. In the distance I can see the Snowdonia mountain range. As you can see the mountain range is in focus and it's crisp. In the foreground we have a bridge which is about a mile away. That's also in focus. This railing is about a foot in front of me and the bridge behind probably extends over the Menai Straits for about a, a mile maybe, perhaps a mile, maybe less than that. Sorry for the shaky camera work but I'm holding a camera while having to manually adjust the focus and I'm not sure that there's any way to really reduce camera shake using that kind of technique because even if I had a gimbal touching that lens is going to cause a lot of distortion. The camera work, the, the, the actual footage here hasn't been adjusted. It's not colour corrected, it's not enhanced in any way. It's just straight out of the camera as is. Of course that's how it should be if you're going to be um, monitoring the, uh, the quality of the, the picture. The dynamic range on these lenses are quite good. So a little bit of colour correction, a little bit of uh, flavour and, and we have the, the range there to be able to do it. The bridge scene was shot on a, an overcast cloudy day really and this next scene here at the boatyard that was shot at the end of the evening um, probably around three four o'clock on a really nice sunny but cold March day. The sun is getting low in the sky and it's it's blindingly yellow. Um, so you can see that in this next shot with the toy car you can probably see it better. It was shot at the same day um, just slightly later on. I'm zooming in on the... I'm, I'm focusing in on that toy car again which is about two foot in front of me and the grass verge behind that is about five feet away. So as you can see, it, it definitely has made a difference to the lens. It's, it's now a lens that is useful again. So, what did you think of those shots? A bit better? It just allows you to use this lens for a lot of different purposes. It's, it's, it's something that revives the lens, I think. I think it brings it back to life and makes it useful. Um, I really like the character on the lens. Um, I really liked it when I, I first bought it as a, as a, as a little, you know, um, close-up sort of lens. I, I wanted something to, to give a bit of character to something I was doing and, and I really fell in love with it. It was a fantastic little lens. I thought, how can I make this um, infinity focus work? And sometimes, of course, you can you can take the faceplate off here, and you can you can mess with the um, helicoid, uh, and it and it and it can work in a similar way to, I suppose, the, the Helios. Um, but with this one, you have little spaces which you can put in inside, and that that's all you need to do with this one. It's really easy to adapt to Nikon. Um, but it's not as nice as the Tazar. Now, how I make these plates after 3D printing them is by basically casting them in a mould, which is also 3D printed. So the actual part is made from here. And it's cast out of resin. So it's quite tough, durable material. A nice re-engineered Zeiss lens backing plate and it's easy to adapt easy to fit on I'm sure you wouldn't have any problems fitting that next what I'm gonna do 
now that I've done the Zeiss and I'm really really liking the result is I'm working on this this hideous thing which actually was a Minolta rocker 1.7 which is nice and fast um, as you can see it's under development at the moment and we're not really very close but I like that lens too and um, hopefully hopefully oh, this thing is just so that I can just so that I can gauge the angles when I'm taking the details from the from the actual lens with a protractor so it's quite easy to do convert it to 3d CAD and then re-engineer the bits that that I need you see the problem is that Nikon needs this to be a little bit closer to its uh, to its uh, chip and to get it closer we have to remove some of this material here we have to remove about three millimeters on this one actually three millimeters which is quite a lot it doesn't sound a lot but when you get to something like this it is and uh, it's a lot of re-engineering it's really not worth it I mean unless you're doing it for fun um, it's just totally not worth it because you know for the hours and the um, time that you'd spend uh, spend messing about and doing this I just do it in my spare time but you could easily just probably afford an, a, a nice Nikon lens but why that's the thing why not be different if you've liked this little experiment then smash that like button and subscribe if you have any tips for me then I'd love to hear about them and if um, if there's anything you want to know about how this was made or perhaps if there's something I've missed throughout the video um, then definitely let me know I'll try and get back to your comments straight away and um, hopefully I'll be making another video about a new mod on a different lens so thanks for watching happy modding and um, goodbye